What does a love of God's truth look like in the relationship? Yes, well, I, I feel, again, if I just have some general comments about it and then we talk about some specifics that we've written mm -hmm. down. But mm -hmm. again, um, we need to see the importance of God's truth in the relationship. And, and a person who doesn't believe in God, well, you could say, what is the importance of pure truth? You know, the real absolute truth in the relationship. Now, the importance of truth cannot be underestimated, in my opinion. It is of supreme value in any relationship. Without truth, no trust can develop. There can be no real love. There can be no faith that in certain circumstances and situations, love will be present without truth being present. Mm -hmm. And there can be no trust of the other party in the relationship if the other party is, has been shown to be in the past untruthful. So it is a huge part of developing trust and honour and love in the relationship. And without truth, a trusting, honest, open relationship cannot exist. Now, let's examine it from God's truth perspective, not just from truth. Mm -hmm. From God's truth perspective, God is the being of the universe that has all truth. So God's truth is highly important inside of the relationship because it is quite frequent inside of the relationship that our personal ideas of what are true are wrong. Mm -hmm. And at some point, one or both of us is going to have to accept that. And if both of us can accept that right at the beginning, that we both do not understand pure truth, that we are not purely and openly truthful with each other about everything, and we have to use that as the guideline of having a decent relationship. And if we go one step further, if we have a relationship with God, that our goal is actually to learn what God's truth is and practice it in the relationship, then we have the ability to have a very successful relationship. We also need to point out at this introductory phase that a soulmate relationship is not possible at all without truth without God's truth, actually. So there are many soulmates in the spirit world that have a relationship, but they don't have a complete soul union based relationship because they're in the sixth sphere and they're still blocking all of the truth that can come from God. Only those people who reach a soul union condition, which is the joining of both halves of the soul, mm -hmm. are those people who have accepted the truth, the universal truth or God's truth about all the issues associated with their relationship in particular, and also about many other truths of the universe. So, so unless there is a dedication on the part of both parties in a relationship towards truth, sooner or later, the relationship is going to come under strain. Yeah. Yep. And so that's what we need to say at the outset. Yeah. Now let's look at some of what that looks like inside of a relationship. What does it look like if I'm focused on God's truth in yes. the relationship? So if we both love God's truth in the relationship and we're both seeking God's truth, we don't arrogantly believe that we already know what God's truth is before we work on the issues. Yes. So, so in other words, we don't just assume that uh, we are God, because really, if you believe you know all of God's truth, then really you believe you're God. Now, there are religions and New Age philosophies that say you are, which are very harmful to relationships, actually, because they basically teach you that you are God and therefore you are, you know, you do know everything. You just have to be conscious of it or whatever their explanation of it is. Yeah. The reality is you're not God. You never will be God. So therefore you will never know all of God's truth. However, God has the capacity to give you all of God's truth or as much of God's truth as you desire to absorb. And if both parties in a relationship desire to absorb it, then you have a hope of actually seeing your own flaws and your own inadequacies and your own untruthful behavior and changing it. Mm -hmm. But without that, you can't see these inadequacies in the relationship and so the relationship will not grow. Yeah. yeah. Truth is essential for the growth of the relationship. Well, it, I feel it binds people together in relationships. Yes. The, the, a combined desire for and honour of truth is the only thing that it, brings people together. It also brings trust. It, 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 the beauty of truth is that when I know that you're 100% truthful with me and you know that I'm 100% truthful with you, 
you know you can trust the person. You know whatever they're thinking, whatever they're feeling, that you will eventually know it even if you don't ask because the other person's honest about it. You will know that you can trust what they're, what they're doing. You know that when they say, no, they haven't slept with Mrs. Jones down the street, that they haven't slept with Mrs. Jones down the street and you can bank your life on it, right? But, but a person who hasn't got that kind of truth in a relationship obviously has no trust in the relationship either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, another aspect, if we love God's truth in the relationship, both of us focus on always discovering what God's truth is about an issue rather than holding on to our own personal truth yep. or attempting to compromise by having two different versions of personal truth. Yes. Now, I see this happening so many times in relationships. What they do is they say to each other or and to themselves, none of us really know what the truth is. So what we're going to do is I'll have my truth and you can have your truth and we'll just make some compromises wherever those two things disagree, right? Now, that is not ever going to be a relationship which is actually a very strong relationship in the long run. There is this concept, the world concept of relationship is the more you compromise in the relationship, the better the relationship becomes. That's the world view. And God's view is no compromise should ever be necessary in a relationship. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Most people believe that no relationship is possible unless compromise Correct. Yeah. And it's very sad, isn't it? I find that basically the global feeling about truth is that you can never find an absolute truth, yes. like the global injury. And they might not say that about God even, but within their personal relationships, that's what they believe. Yes. And which indicates there's some some inconsistencies in their personal belief system. Correct. Uh, and also that as a result, they believe that compromise has to happen for there to be any kind of harmony. Yes. Yeah. And if you go along to a marriage counsellor, for example, on the planet, most marriage counsellors would definitely advise compromise in mm -hmm. the relationship. And what I'm saying here is that actually no compromise is necessary in the relationship. Or to say it more clearly, no compromise with each other is necessary in the relationship. But both of you will have to compromise when it comes to God's truth because <laughs> God's truth is true and both of you will need to change in order to accept it. Yeah, yeah. We're... <laughs> I don't want to make this about me, but I just <laughs> think on. about uh, examples within our relationship where you know, often when a couple is moving towards God's truth together, it's just as you said, where there's a compromise and both, if they're sincerely seeking, have to, seeking God's truth, they both have to face some personal pain or frustration or fear in order to move forward. Mm. But very often in the beginning of our relationship, especially, it, you would be pointing out, pointing out a truth and I would sit with it and reason about it and realize it's true. And because you'd already accepted the truth, it was smooth sailing for you. But for me, <laughs> it was exactly. weeks of confrontation. Yes. Yeah. And this is what a person would need to understand too, that if they start accepting God's truth, there are at times going to be weeks or even months of internal conflict going on yeah. that they'll need to work through emotionally in order to accept God's truth. And this is why God's truth needs to be the benchmark of the relationship, not your personal truth. Your personal truth and your desire to hold on to it is a very flawed concept when it comes to having a decent relationship. If you think about it logically, if God does exist, then God would know how best for you to have a relationship, you know, what mm -hmm. the best things for you to do are to have a relationship. Now, my suggestion to any person who believes in God is that you must understand what God believes is a good relationship before you'll have one, <laughs> yeah. because you definitely won't have a good relationship before then. Mm -hmm. And that is going to require that both of you accept God's truth about relationships rather than holding on to your own ideas and concepts about what makes a good relationship. Yeah. Yeah, so that, and, and that requires both of you changing to have God's view. Mm -hmm. Right Now, if we take it from the point of view as absolute truth, so a person doesn't believe in God, then of course it's a bit more difficult. If a person uh, believes in the concept of absolute truth, 
then we're fine because mm. it, then then both parties know if both parties believe in that concept that there is an absolute truth in this particular situation and whatever that absolute truth is is what we both need to agree upon right yeah. at, at some point now my and that absolute truth may be may be in disagreement with both of their individual personal truths mm -hmm. right but for them to know the difference is very difficult yeah and that's why it's very very difficult without god in a relationship to actually work through this issue of truth in a relationship and it's also why the majority of people without god in a relationship eventually hang on to the concept that each has their personal truth and they need to compromise yeah yep yeah Okay. Mm.